Hi, I'm Danny Poulos from the Elite Lending Team at Fenby Mortgage. Thanks for joining us this week for Real Estate Insiders. We've got two really, really special guests. The first is Jason Flannery. He's with Waterpoint Realty Group and he's the current president of the Jupiter Tequesta Hope Sound Association of Realtors. And he's going to tell us all about what that means to be a member of a realty association. Then we're going to be joined by Joe Cortez from the Elite Lending Team at Fenby, and he's going to talk about something I know you haven't heard of, and it's a tax credit, a, a real in-your-pocket money tax credit for people who are first-time home buyers in the state of Florida, and he's been chosen to administer this program. So stick with us. We'll be back in a moment. Hi, thanks for coming back to Real Estate Insiders. We're joined today by Jason Flannery. He's with Waterpoint Realty Group and also the current president of the Jupiter Tequesta Hope Sound Association of Realtors. Thanks for being with us today, Jason. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. So, first of all, I think um, we should spend a little time just explaining what an association of realtors is, how that affects people selling real estate and also how it impacts the real estate market and people buying and selling real estate. So what does it mean to be a member of the Association of Realtors? Well, being a member of the Realtor Association, is it's a membership built for realtors to help them strive in the business. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's designed to help realtors do their everyday business in the marketplace. Um, it, it, when you get your real estate license, it's one thing to get your license and move on and, and you, now you pass, now you're a realtor. But the next step is to find an association that you can uh, be involved with that will help teach you, will help nourish you and um, get you going in the business. And, 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 and also, it's a great way to market and meet with um, networking with other, with other agents as well. And, and you've explained this to me before, but so we can share it with the audiences. I guess if someone uh, if, gets their real estate license, once they become a member of association, then they're allowed to call themselves a realtor. Correct. As That's opposed right. to a salesperson or just a real estate agent. Um, so, being a realtor, how does that differentiate itself from some, just someone who sells real estate and has a license? Well, being a realtor means that you are part of a, a national, state, and local association. Which they have guidelines. There's ethical practices. There's there's training involved. Um, there's rules and regulations of how you conduct yourself with the general public and and how you do business. Um, there's a couple different ones. There's there's a realtor, which is the, the having a real estate license and the ability to join a board. And then there's also a, what they call a Thompson broker. And this is somebody that's not necessarily a, he's not a, a member of an association, but he is a member of the multiple listing service, which is where we utilize our data. And then, and then there's the, the salesman, a, a person who has a real estate license that's not a realtor that isn't really bound by any rules or regulations of the real estate market, which, which is, um, you know, I would caution everybody that's a buyer or seller out there to make sure that who you're dealing with is a realtor. So once you have, you, you take your schooling and you pass your test, you have a real estate license, that gives you a license to sell real estate and you're governed by certain laws of the state. It sounds like that once you take the next step and become a realtor, that you're really answering to a higher standard. Um, you said there's code of ethics involved. Absolutely. There's 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 different things you have to uh, to qualify for rather than just being a salesperson. Yeah, there's there, you have to update. You have to continue with your code of ethics. Continue being on top of your business. Um, by being a realtor, I think it's a career. It's not a salesman that. You know, a lot of times, uh, if a salesman gets a license, they may be working another full-time job. Uh, they, not, they might not want to uh, invest the money or the time and energy into a, a secondary job or whatnot. And they're the realtor that might just do something for a friend next door or for themselves or have the license just in case they decide to get into the business. But a realtor is, is held at a very high standard um, through the ethics training, through... Uh, standards or practices, it, it's a whole different ballpark when you're actually wearing the realtor pin. Well, let me ask you then, why wouldn't everybody that has a real estate license want to be a realtor? Well, I think the majority out there that understand that the training, the, the, the standards of practices, the professionalism is going to come from a realtor. Um, myself, personally, I, I would see it no other way. But there are, uh, you know, everybody's different. There's if I could guess, I, I would think someone has a license and if, if it's not a full-time career, there's expenses involved with Absolutely. being a member of association you've got responsibilities 
things that are that not really prepared for. Uh, and I would, I would also expect that when the real estate market was so boiling over hot a couple of years ago, that a lot of people got their license and never really became career people in the, in the real estate business, right? That's true. And if that's the case, you know, a lot of times it is more of the, the agents that aren't fully committed to this. Because if you're committed to selling real estate, you want to be on, you want to be have the knowledge of the most up to date stuff you can have. Right. You, you don't want to uh, if you're going to half you know half step this thing, you're going to get what you get out of it. Uh, real estate is one of those things that if you put a hundred percent in, you're going to get a hundred percent back out. If you're putting in 50%, that's what you're going to get back out. This is the prime example of that business. So for people out there that are looking to buy or sell real estate, I guess it's a question that they would ask. They want to know if you're a realtor, are you putting your 100% in? Or are you someone that just got your license and does a, a deal now and then? Because if you want to get the right service, uh, you want to know that you're dealing with the right person, I would expect. Yeah, that should be a great, that's a great, that's, some, that's a good point. Because I think that any... Any buyer or seller, that should be one of the four that should be the forefront questions that come out. Right. Are you a licensed realtor? And they say, Yes, I have a license, a real estate license, but that that are you a licensed realtor? It means you belong to a board. You know, another thing on this is this is our this is the only one of the only trade organizations you you to be involved in where you have competing realtors, competing brokers working with one another to make this better. Sure. You know that it, it's not many businesses around that one realtor will help another realtor that's competing with them to make their profession better. It, it, it's a it's a very good step. I a lot of credit to the National Association of Realtors, the Florida Association of Realtors, and the local boards for making all this work and all this happening and, and, and working so closely with realtors to, to put a, a seasoned realtor with a new realtor right. for them to come up and, and, and make sure that they're doing the right thing by the general public. So, you know, hats off to, to National Association of Realtors and the Florida Association of Realtors for really pushing this through. And, and you know, I know that uh, for Jupiter's Request, the Hope Sound Association, it's sort of like, it's a, it's a smaller association. Um, how would you say that it differs from some of the, maybe some of the bigger associations? Well, I'm an special? advocate of all associations. I, I, I think big, small, middle, we're, we're more of a middle um, gotcha. uh, association, but I, I really, I'm an advocate of of what they do, uh, what gets done every day to help a realtor perform their businesses and help them become a better business person out there. Um, so our, our association, I think the difference between Jupiter to Quest to Hope Sound um, is we're a little more hands-on. I, I believe we're a little more in touch. For me personally, I'm a realtor that's out there every single day doing business. So I, I work alongside my peers. Um, and, and they're quick to tell me, you know, can we do this or can we do that? And, and, and you have to have an open ear to this and say, hey, that's a great idea. Let's move along in that direction. Or, hey, that's already been tried and there's a little kinks here and there. But you're listening. You're, 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 you're on the ground level, which right. is very important. And, and, and a lot of people don't understand how the system works with your board of directors, your presence, your presence of elects. It's, it's an all-volunteer position. It's, it, n nobody's paid. Nobody, as far as I know, nobody's paid, or nobody has any, uh, you know, alternative. You're, you're you're in there to make the right choices for the people that let you, which is the membership of your association. So you're president for nothing. That's you're a voluntary <laughs> position. Oh, really? That's, I mean, that's that's. Well, as as far as getting paid, yes, but I, you know, I'm very humbled by by my peers choosing me to be the president of the association. Um, really, what I've what I've given and what I've been given is is completely. Right. I mean. Really, the the training, the uh, the education, you can't as a board member by somebody that's active in the association, you couldn't buy the education that you're getting. And if you did, it would be very expensive education. So I'm blessed the fact that I've been able to learn so much, and 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 also having my peers, learn, you know, meeting people that I would have never met otherwise. Right. You and I, for instance, and the stuff that we've done in the past in our business relationship. I don't know if we would have met through any other way, but by through the association. Um, our association is blessed that it has two past Florida association presidents with, with Patty Fitzgerald and, and Michael Dooley. Um, so they were presidents of your local association and went on to become presidents of the state? Of the state, yes. State association. So that's, that's humbling. And, you know, there's, other, there, there's others. I, you know, I could sit here and name them forever. Um, Jonah Lippo for, for Global, what she does in the DVP. And, and uh, Phyllis Choi, out of our own office at Waterpoint Realty Group, was actually a two-time local president wow. in DVP and also award winner state level. So it's very humbling to be around this caliber of, of, of realtors and business people. 
right. and then at the same time learning from them directly. So the benefit, you might not get that paycheck, but that benefit of sure. knowing what's going on on a daily basis and being around this type of professional, it's priceless. You know, and I've heard particularly with your, with your association, um, as associations get bigger and bigger, sometimes the organization at the top seems to start to run the program, but you guys seem to really have maintained uh, that you are the voice of the realtors, absolutely, of the, of the real estate community. So there's really a lot of everyone's active, you know, and, and involved, and that trickles up to the leadership uh, to where you're really representing the voice of the realtors themselves. I'm glad you phrase it like trickling up because that's what exactly what happens in our association. It doesn't trickle down from your leadership; it trickles up from your membership, and and that's key. Um, I think that keeps us grounded. It keeps it to where, you know, we all are volunteers. So between family life and, and your real estate and your business, to put that time, you you definitely need strong staff members at the right. association, which we do have a very support, a very strong support crew in our staff. Um, I think the difference is, like you said, that we're a, we're a voice of our membership. We are a realtor voice. It, it doesn't matter uh, size sometimes. If you have strong leaders and, and, and you're a strong board of directors, strong membership, things are going to get ran as the membership wants. It's just when you the time is not there and, and you do get so big at some time that your staff, non-realtors, tend to run a realtor association, which is very hard for me to grasp right. sometimes that, you know, it's, it's, it's the same thing. It's, you know, when you have somebody that's not in the business, but they're running the business, you, you kind of wonder who's the one making the decisions are we doing this for the realtor or are we doing this to to become the biggest and best of you know that's yeah, well, well and at the same time all you people in the leadership of the association are also full-fledged full-time realtors so it's also you've got to be able to split your time and do both also so I mean there's, there's a lot of effort that's put out there um, Jason, I'd like you to be able to tell people how they can reach you to either uh, at Waterpoint Realty Group or at the Jupiter Tequesta Hope Sound Association of Realtors if they have any more questions. Want to get more information? Yeah, you can reach me at Waterpoint Realty Group. You can reach me at my cell phone direct is 561-762-3272. Or you can call the association and ask for Tracy Millett, which is our, our administrative uh, personnel there. And, and, and she's at 561 747 2707 or you can send me an email at jasonflannery at comcast.net. Awesome. Thanks very much for being here today. We learned a lot. I appreciate that. Thank you much. <laughs>